morning. My name's Ray. I'm with Team Steam. This morning I'm here at Flash Industrial Painting because, and you might want to sit down for this, we're working on a semi that's got a few challenges. Today we're working on this uh, Kenworth W900. I'm not sure of the year. They, they look pretty darn similar for quite a few years and I haven't looked inside the door on this one. But uh, this one's from a town away and it uh, has no shortage of challenges. We've got some random holes. He's probably from a mirror. I don't know what that's from. Almost looks like I got shot. And then of course, somebody didn't sand out the um, previous striping enough and the camera probably won't pick it up, but this had that hand painted stuff on it and somebody didn't sand it out enough and you can see it all. You can even see their unit numbers still. We've got the clear coat peeling off, very common. And then we've got uh, evidence that some other body shop had done what they do, which is make big obvious marks, not match anything up and make no further attempts. So it's just good and ugly. And I, I see good and ugly repairs all the time. Another example of uh, excellent body shop stewardship. This was cracked and broken. It looks like they didn't repair it right. They just put some body filler in it, of course. I'll bet you anything it's not repaired on the backside and it's not. And then look at this just absolutely lousy whatever it was they did here. Just finishing up the striper moving. And here, this is a pretty typical thing to see around here. The boys will go after a project like this and just get all the rivets scratched right off the bat. This side, no different. You can see, look, we got around that, all those rivets, all these rows of rivets. Back behind this exhaust, all these rivets down here. And now the boys got the back sanded entirely for me. I had them hold off on the sides because again, I want to decide what's sanded and what isn't because there's certain places where there's dents. There's a dent right there. And I need to know that. And if this is sanded and, and flat, a lot of these smaller dents, you know, you just don't see. You gotta have the gloss. But back here, it's all dents. I went ahead and put a uh, fiberglass patch on there, as you see. There's like three of them, actually. It's three layers thick, so, you know, uh, about three sixteenths of an inch thick. Doesn't really matter. It's not gonna ever get hit again, but it's definitely, it will match the strength for what its intended purpose is of the material around it. So we're ready to go there. Uh, the rest of this all got sanded. We're gonna get going on some body work here in just a sec. So we'll start by covering that entire panel. And here's the first panel after I've sanded it for the first time. First coat, first panel, first sanding. And here's the panel just above it, uh, just after having put body work on it. And here it is with that top panel sanded. And here's the next section, fresh in body work. And here's the first coat on the bottom of this panel, second coat on the top part, second coat on the side here. And there's that side sanded, and this side freshly applied. And there's everything all sanded, ready for whatever little touch-up coat we need to do, and to move on to the other bodywork. Getting inside this hood here, see that break? Pretty good size break, pretty solid break. And now I'm on the passenger side, standing on a ladder, looking down on the open hood at that brace, that heavy brace right there in the corner, right here. Here's where it's broke. And you can see they tried to use that wussy cloth and they tried to get it barely damp. I'm not sure what the thought is on that, but almost everybody does it that way. So I need to tear all of that garbage off, start over, as you can see, it's broken all the way up around the corner. And uh, repair this hood correctly. See how I'm just tearing that cloth? I mean, I'm just tearing it. It's like two or three layers thick and I'm just tearing it. This is why fiberglass cloth doesn't work for these kind of repairs. I'm not even 100% sure what they what it does work for repair-wise. I know that you can build stuff with it, but it it's not good for repairs. Now you can see right there in that part of that curvature how eaten up that is. That happens a lot on these trucks. If these hoods get maladjusted, they come down in the wrong spot, and you can see just what's happened here. It's eaten all the way in too. 
I don't want to make this look brand new again. You can't ever see it. It doesn't really matter, and it definitely doesn't need to be intrusive. Obviously, it's kind of it's in the way of something. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just hold this together with a band of uh, fiberglass, so it's all one piece again. But it won't be nearly as tall as it was when it was stock. It'll be about as tall as it is right now. That way, it's just out of the way, but it's all one piece and it's not flopping around. We'll straighten up that heavy bend. It's bent pretty good. So I've gone ahead and pulled the headlights all the way out so I can kind of get to the bottom of what's going on there. And what I figured out is that I don't need to perform any additional fiberglass repair. What had happened was some owner decided he was going to put in the round, classier looking headlights, which doesn't go with this body style at all. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work, but they tried it. And what they did was when they put in their new round headlights, whoever did the work put in a bunch of this ugly fiberglass cloth on the backside to fill in all the spaces around their new round headlights. Then when the current owner or a later owner, I don't even know if it was the current owner, got their wits about them and decided that was an ugly dumb look and went back to the, the classic look, they had to cut all that back out because of all the fiberglass cloth somebody had put in in these spots that all needed cut back out so they could put their classic lights back in. And so they cut it out. And that's why on the inside of here, you see, I see all of that uh, just wrinkled up ugly crap is because that was the remains of them filling all this in. They did a lousy job, but it doesn't hurt anything that it's there. I'm gonna peel out the loose crappy stuff, but it, it doesn't actually hurt a single thing that it's there. So I'm busy getting all these guys, these little, these little guys like this and this and this ready for fiberglass inlay. And you just grind them down about a 16th to an eighth of an inch. And then you fill that in with fiberglass and you'll never see them again. You'll never see the outline of the hole like you would if they were bodywork. You can't just do bodywork on those holes. You gotta do fiberglass if you want them done right. And as I'm busy going around the truck, getting all the holes, a lot of times I'll get some from the inside. The, I decided to get these from the outside because uh, most of them are available more easily from the outside and the, the repair will actually take better that way. But as I'm doing it, I find this. I look over here and I see this crack right through here and that makes me immediately wonder what kind of what size of repair was done here so then i look on the underside of the fender and i see that the entire bottom part of the fender at some point probably got hooked on something that happens a lot uh got ripped off got ripped all the way off the truck and when that happened they repaired the inside with fiberglass and not nearly as big a repair as I would have done. They 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 did a, a good enough repair as far as it'll probably hold and and it was made out of it was done with matting and not cloth, so that's good. But it's only about that wide. I mean, I I would have repaired it about twice that wide. I want a big repair. And uh, anyway, they didn't repair this side. And a lot of times with this size of repair, particularly the bottom of a fender that's got to hold mud flaps, and it's going to have tons of ice hanging off of it in the winter and ice hanging off of the mud flap and the mud flap flopping in the breeze and all this sort of stuff always working on it you definitely want to repair both sides you want to do your repair on both sides of these i always when i repair a big i do a big fender repair i'll sandwich it i'll do i'll do a big fiberglass repair literally on both sides so it, it can't come apart and what their repair did was it held on the inside enough but it started uh wiggling and came apart right over here and what their repair did was it held together good enough, I guess for now, I don't know how old a repair this is, on the inside, but on the outside, it, the wiggling of the fender and the jostling of the fender cracked it because they didn't repair it. As you can see, what they did was they just smeared a bunch of crap in there. Some other sort of fiberglass filler, I see that all the time. It's just a filler. It's not, it's not to strengthen anything, but people don't seem to understand that. So then they filled it in like right here, some more of that crappy fiberglass filler. I ground that way back. That's clear back. That way my repair is going to be a solid fiberglass sheet that connects this to this and is about eight inches to 10 inches wide here. No less than six inches wide everywhere, everywhere. And it's ground clear back. So I can put a good heavy repair on this. So you'll never, ever, ever hear from this again, which is what they should have done. I put packing tape, of course, on this side of it. So this just will peel right away. That way I can do this entire repair from the outside. Some of these repairs I'll do from the outside. A lot of times I'll do them from the inside because I can make them just so thick and just sturdy. But this one has a lot of challenges, you know, and I feel like 
cutting all this mud flap mount out of there and possibly rebuilding it or figuring out what to do. I didn't feel like messing with all that. I just want to, I'll make a solid repair from the outside and call it good. And here's that side of the hood after I've uh, put a mold on it. And there's all those repairs we did yesterday. All cured out. Strong, every bit as strong, if not more strong than it was when it was new. And then we'll go ahead and we'll pull this one here out of the uh, corner as well. Again, we just put the packing tape on the back so it comes right off. And here we've got that uh, corner on the outside. Nice thick repair. Now I can uh, prep it and do some body work there. Got the inlay there. Got the inlay there. Went ahead and got the inlay there and there. This is on the passenger side. This is where that mirror was. This is where that random hole was. I have no idea why it was there, but I went ahead and got it from the outside. This is where the mount was for this lower chrome that comes on some of these Kenworths. And uh, this was that big break. And I re-glassed it. This little mishap's been covered up. Where this got worn all the way down, I went ahead and replenished with more fiberglass. Just about have the bodywork done on the side here, uh, passenger side. Bodywork's basically done on the driver's side. Here's where that emblem is supposed to go and that chrome's supposed to go on the uh, driver's side. That's all been inlaid and done. This, of course, has been fixed now. I can go ahead and do that bodywork. And here's all those same repairs, all ground flat now. Now I'm just going to sand around them and do the bodywork. All right, let's get some more mud on it. The body works pretty much ready all the way around this truck. You see right here, we've got these squared away with a couple coats. You see right here, same thing, squared away. That'll my, that's my last coat on there. I'll be sanding that here in a minute. That's finished up. That's my last coat on that. I'll be sanding that up here in a minute. Here's the glaze coat just before I sand it on the fender. Here's the glaze coat on the side just before I sand it. I already sanded the other side, otherwise I'd get it too, but that's just it goes to show you that even though I don't always film it, it always gets that glaze coating. And then it gets re-sanded again. And yesterday at the end of the day, I uh, managed to get all the uh, wet sanding primer on it after I sanded all that clear coat off both sides and every place that it was. The entire top was uh, glazed and primed because it was just nothing but cracks again. And here's what it's like with the uh, fiberglass on it. It's set up. I just need to go ahead and cut out the shape that I wish it to be. It's, uh, I put it on both sides and sandwiched it. And now I'm just gonna cut it out. What I've done here is I've just laid out a quarter inch wide vinyl tape about where I want to uh, cut this. So I can just go along the tape. It's just a line that won't move and it won't disappear within the dust that I'm about to create. And I'll just cut it off that way. And here's the inside one. And now, that looks decent enough. And up here on top of the cab, where the uh, old visor was, they just had some uh, silicone in there that wasn't holding, as you can see, it's got a hole in the cab. So I just went ahead and took this die grinder, ground all that out, ground it down about a sixteenth of an inch, did the same thing over here. That way I can put in some fiberglass patches and do body work over them. Well, it's looking like we're 100% prepped, 100% blown off, 100% primed, everything's ready. So I'm gonna go ahead, set this camera up, 
I'm gonna double prime this, maybe even triple. I have to prime this in beige until absolutely nothing shows through that primer. And it's fairly transparent primer. All my primer is, it's fairly transparent. Sometimes you can still see things through it. That's not a problem. But in this case it is. Because orange paint, red paint, yellow paint especially, you can see through those pretty easy. Even two, three, four coats. So you have to get your primer right when you're dealing with something like this. And if you prime it in gray, you're gonna get a muddy color. If you prime it in white, you're gonna get a muddy color. So you gotta prime it in at least beige or red oxide. I can't get red oxide in this particular paint system. So I do beige and it works great. So I'll be priming this in beige until you can't see anything through it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint it orange. So I got this shot yesterday and uh, boys are going to be here any minute. We're going to start uh, unmasking it and putting it together. So we're getting some of it unmasked, most of it unmasked. Now we're getting her all put back together. A lot of parts came off of it. We didn't take the exhaust off, I already explained why. But we didn't pay for it either. It's nice and painted, nice and shiny all the way up behind it. Now the rest of this is getting unmasked. Just in the process of uh, getting it all put back together. This is Thanksgiving Day too, by the way. All right, so we got most of the stuff back on it. Just making our way around it. Getting some of the final things on it. Matching up some of the bolts that didn't make it through the process. And going through some of the last stuff here. All right, so the boys are done and out of here. Turned them loose a couple minutes ago. This guy's done, ready to leave. It will be leaving here in a few hours. Let's uh, let's have a look. All right, there's the back that was torn up like they all are. It looked hailed out like they all do. We scooted this back. That way we could uh, get everything back behind there. We got, took care of that uh, fact that that was completely, it wasn't completely caved in, but it had so much damage that I ended up covering the door in bodywork. Took care of the other dents, they're gone. Shot behind the exhaust, it's nice and glossy back there the whole way. No runs. Gloss turned out good. That repair, it, you, you could never tell it's there. Rock solid and you could never tell it's there. All those holes that were in there for the mirrors and all that, that that's gone. You can never tell they were there. Same with over here. The corner. You can't tell any of that was there, even though it was missing entirely. Nice and bright orange. Ready to hit the road. Anyway, this guy's done. On to the next incident. See you guys around.